Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible studies. We continue to rightly divide the word, the truth. Now, I'm coming to you on a Shabbat morning, Saturday morning. This will be the fifth Shabbat since uh, the offer of first fruits. So we have uh, two more weeks, and then the following day, be the first day of the week, would be uh, Pentecost. That's the uh, feast day when the Father sent his spirit 2,000 years ago in the fullness at Pentecost. So this would be the fifth day, uh, excuse me, the fifth Sabbath uh, since first fruits. It would be on the second month, it would be the last day of the month, 30th day of the second month. Today is the 30th day of the second month. Uh, tomorrow starts the first day of the third month. And then we'll have two Shabbats, and then the following day will be uh, Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. So I'd like to welcome all the YouTubers, all the social media, anybody viewing past, present, Lord willing, future videos. Now, as we start this morning's study, I want to, of course, start off with the Lord's Prayer, and then we're going to look as Christ is teaching uh, about the commandments, people. Uh, to the Jews or to Israel or the southern kingdom that were supposed to be the progenitors of the Torah, the commandments. Of course, they weren't. Uh, and Christ has uh, come to uh, fulfill not, to, not, to, not what they teach as far as uh, all the law was nailed to the cross when Christ died, but he come to fulfill the two greatest commandments, which all the Ten Commandments fall upon. Let's love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and might, and your neighbors yourself, and Christ fulfilled those commandments. He never sinned. And though and that hung all the law of the prophets, people. That's the that's the Torah, that's the Old Testament. We have the renewed Torah, the renewed covenant, is uh, Christ is that covenant. And it, and in that covenant, of course, is the shedding of blood as the only sacrifice, as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Okay, now, so as we start here, let's start with the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll move into, I will go to John 13 chapter, and we'll pick up and look at some teaching there. As we look at this word over, as I've talked about it many, many hours, but there is so much deception about love that God loves everybody or God's love for us is or they they do not see in scripture because of the deception if you talk about a commandment spiritual commandment or the ten commandments or any commandment they always go back and say well we are saved by grace through faith we're not under the law see so there again, because they don't understand when Paul uses the word charity or when you see the word love, you have mainly two, two words there that are sister. G26 is a agape, a G25 agapo. Uh, these are sister words, and they come from the Hebrew word uh, love. And the good sense of the Hebrew word, it means to breathe after. So this is God, how he loved the world, that he breathed his commandments by the Holy Spirit in us once you're born again. So it's very important that we come to see this. So let's pick it up here in Matthew 6 and 9. And Christ said, After this manner, therefore pray and command, Ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will come into being in the earth as in the heaven. And that's what he was preaching. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is nigh at hand, and that kingdom he was talking about that would be come into the earth was the spiritual kingdom that we enter into Christ's kingdom once we believe and are given the commandments to walk in that kingdom. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for our debts, and we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory to the ages of forever and ever. Amen. So very important here, people. Uh, now we're commanded 
to pray this prayer. I know there's a lot of people say that the prayer is not for us. And there again, I say, well, if you're not going to do what he says, then do uh, go by your own uh, doctrine or, or man or whatever man's teaching you, because that's what that's what the iniquity is about, people. That's why the mystery of iniquity had already started two thousand years ago. That's why the mystery of iniquity or iniquity would increase. Christ said. It would multiply. As we get closer to the end, it's going to even multiply greater when the false Messiah uh, and the false prophets stand up and they're given power by Satan. Why? Because it is revealed in Scripture that God sends a strong, or the Spirit sends a strong delusion because they did not love uh, the Father's truth. They did not love the Father's truth to be saved, but they had pleasure in unrighteousness and the unrighteous, deceptive teaching. That's what Paul reveals in 2 Thessalonians. So, okay, so let's pick it up here. And we'll, we're looking in Mark here, or John, excuse me, John the 13th chapter verse uh 1334 and Christ says a new commandment I give unto you now the word new here is, is the same word for New Testament New Covenant it means a refreshed that's what the, this word means it means a new especially in freshness uh, uh, so with respect to age new uh, 3105 is, is is the Greek word with respect to age. This is a newness, a refreshness. Uh, commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Of course, uh, he has given this to his apostles. And of course, there's the word G25, the word G25, love. And this is, comes after the Hebrew word to breathe after. So now Christ's word is made flesh here, and he's, he's teaching his apostles. And so here is the word he uses, and to love one another uh, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Okay, how did Christ love them? People. See, how did he love them? He, was, he, he, he kept the commandments that was uh, that had always been from the Father. Uh, he didn't come down to do His will, but the Father's will, and He breathed after the commandments towards His chosen disciples. That's how He loved them, people. Okay, got to you got to get a hold of this word love. Uh, and He said, "Now this is how I love you. Now you are to love same word one another." Now, of course, we're going to see something interesting here. Uh, and and the, the, this is Christ's teaching. But we've got to understand Christ is going to teach, as he's teaching his apostles now, but he's also going to tell them, especially Peter, that the, he can't do this right now. Now, let's see. This is so very important, people. But now his teaching that's the gospel. The gospel goes out as a witness to the nations uh, as we witness uh, the testimony of Messiah because that spirit has been birthed in us and by, according to the word of God and the testimony of Yeshua, that witness is our prophecy. That's prophecy or prophesying the witness of Messiah. It's not, pro it's not in the plural tense because it's the same prophecy that edifies the body. In other words, if we love one another, if Christ loved us, or start with the apostles he chose, then they are to walk the same way he's walking to them. Now we're going to see it's impossible for them to do that at this stage. He's in teaching them because the Holy Spirit hasn't been sent yet. Because remember, we got to be born what of the water and the spirit. You can't enter the kingdom. So, so this would be once he fulfills the new covenant, and then the spirit is fed, like I say, uh, 
would be 50 days after uh, the wave offered the first fruits the, by the promise of the Father. And that's what he told them. 40 days once he ascended after uh, first fruits, on the 40th day, he said, Terry, here 10 more days. Promise the Father, send the Holy Spirit, and you'll be baptized in the Spirit. And, and uh, Christ ascended. But see, the promise of the Father was the Spirit would be sent. Okay, so so in his teaching here, this is, of course, uh, before he was even crucified, much less uh, after he was teaching them the kingdom there, the 40 days that he was with them. So we see here, uh, now in 1335 here, but this shall all men, a Jew, Gentile, know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Okay, now this word love is G26, and this is also a sister word of G25. If you see the definition, it is agape. It means it comes from G25. Uh, see, so, but it does, it, it is a commandment. You know, uh, Christ is keeping the commandments, walking toward what his father had told him to do. And we have to do what uh, Christ is teaching and what he's telling us to do. So he's talking to his uh, disciples here. Now remember uh, in John 30, uh, 13, 34, a new commandment that I give unto you that you love one. So here's the commandment, people. Uh, this is a new covenant. Uh, Nothing's changed, uh, but it's a refreshed commandment to love one another. Okay, now, then as, as we go under 36 here, John 13, 36, look what Christ said. Simon, Peter said unto the Lord, or the Master, Whether goest thou, Jesus answered them, Whether I go, thou can follow me now but thou will follow me afterwards. Okay, so what, is this, what does this mean? Peter said to him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him and said, will thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, or truly I say unto thee, the cock shall grow, uh, uh, shall not grow till thou hast denied me thrice. He's telling Peter here. So we've got to come to understand, people, uh, that this is Christ teaching his apostles, his apostles, his commandments. Now, let's move into John, the 14th chapter, and uh, we'll see here that Christ promises the Holy Spirit. And so in John 14, 15, look what Christ says. If you love me, Keep my commandments. Okay, now when you hear the teaching out there, people, when you hear, uh, well, you hear all these people, you know, hear these preachers say, uh, just love Jesus. Uh, and they'll, they have songs, I love you, Jesus. I love you. The greatest, sweetest name ever known, the name Jesus. These songs that these people write and sing, I mean, just, uh, you know, pay attention to what is being taught about loving Jesus. They never tell you, according to the word, if you love the Messiah, you what, people? What does he say? They will never use that in that narrative or context, those that are, are deceivers. Uh, and that's where the most, that's the broad way that leads to destruction. Most people are going in that way, not because I said it, it's because of what his word says. Uh, straight is the gate, narrow is the way, few there find it. Wide is the gate, broad is the way uh, that many go in there to destruction. So that's what he said. So uh, you you got to see uh, as he's teaching here. And so what is he saying? Uh, now, if I say to you, do you love the Messiah? I'm using the word commandment because if you love the Messiah, what did he say? Keep my commandments. These are, 
Now, the commandments that he's given here, the commandment, the new commandment, was uh, to love one another. But that's also, uh, Israel was told that was his second greatest commandment, and those two commandments, the law and the prophet hang on, all the law and the prophets hang on. See? Okay, now look what, what he says here next. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you unto the age. And that's talking about the Holy Spirit. But now we know he's got to go away. And then he says, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him, not neither knoweth him, but yet know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. See, now remember back in John 3, he's talking about you born of the Spirit, see. So here he said, I'll, I will send a comforter, and you will know him, and he will know you. He's talking to his disciples there. Okay. And he will dwell, the Spirit will dwell in you, and and uh, you shall be, in, and, and shall be in you, in your spirit. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but you see me, because I live, you shall live also. Now in that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and the Father being Spirit, and ye in me, and I in you. Uh, in that day it's talking about at the end, uh, but also once the Spirit is sent, but that's the down payment, but we know that we will be glorified. That's the promise of the Father through the Son. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is he that loveth me. People, you need to read this uh, John 14, 21 over and over. He, now notice, he that hath my commandments and keep of them, he is that he is the one that loveth me. Now the word he that hath, I've talked to you about many times, 2192 in the Greek, and the the definition of that means uh, echo, it means uh, to hold, uh, figuratively, directly remote, a position a relationship or condition, but it's a possession. So what does it mean? If you, if you have his commandments and keep of them, you are he that loveth Christ, and he that loveth me shall be a loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. He's talking about in the Spirit here. We must be born of the Spirit. Now, uh, people, this is now, there again. Anybody, if you hear anybody say that they love the Messiah or love Jesus, then they have to possess his commandments. That's what Christ said. He that hath my command. That means you possess them. That means uh, you're walking in them. You're obeying them. See? Now, we see this same word here. Now, let me show you something, people. Uh, John is teaching this. Now, right here, when John is teaching in 1 John 5, which I've showed you many, many times before, right here, whosoever, first verse, whosoever believeth that Yeshua is the Messiah, is born of God. Now, they're telling you there is the first commandment. You've got to believe in the name or believe in the only begotten Son of the Spirit of God. Now, now notice everyone that loveth him is begot, born again that loveth him also is begotten of him, people. That's, there's the word G25. That's how God loves you. He births you with a new birth, but in that new birth is the two renewed commandments. 
is to believe in the name of the Son of God and to love one another. I give you a new commandment, Christ said. By this we know that we love the children of the Spirit of God when we love God and keep now, there again, what is John saying, people? What is he saying? How do you know that you're loving the children of, of the Father, loving one another? What is John telling you? That you're walking in his commandments. That's loving one another. If I'm walking in the commandments toward, towards a, a believer that has the same witness, the same testimony, and, and has the love of God and has been born again, that believer is walking in the commandments. If he's walking in the commandments, that's loving me. That's loving one another, people. Now there again, both of the commandments, to believe in the name of the Son of God and to love one another, that hangs all the law also for the renewed covenant. And in, and in that, what do we learn? That there is, th that you will bear the fruits of the Spirit. You're a, a, a new creature, which is a good tree now. He gives that parable. And a good tree can't bring forth bad fruit. A good tree that's obeying, or if you're obeying, you'll bring forth good fruit. The very first uh, fruit of the Spirit that's listed is love. That's agape, people. That's commandments. You have to have the commandments then. You have patience, endurance. You have uh, long-suffering. You have joy, temperance. All of those are, are fruits of the Spirit. But the first fruit of the Spirit is when people say love, it's, that's the commandment love. You can't love Christ if you say you love Christ and keep not his commandments, then you're a liar if you say that to the Father because the Father gives those to the Son and the Son is given them to us in the renewed covenant, see? Uh, and this is why we're conformed to his image, people. We're not conformed to his image because he was able to do miracles and we do miracles. That is adding to the testimony. It's already been, I've already talked to you many hours when Paul says, hey, once the testimony uh, of, of Jesus Christ confirmed in you, which means walking in the commandments, that's your prophecy, that's your witness upon the earth, then you don't like anything. And there's no other gift coming. So uh, very, very important here, people. So, so right here he says in John 5, 3, for this is the love. See there, the same word, G26, it comes from G25. Here John is telling you back here, back here in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. The, but the, he's talking about the two commandments. But see, all of the commandments hang on those two commandments. Now when I'm talking about the commandments, I'm talking about the Ten Commandments, people. But not according to the letter. It's according to Christ now. Christ kept the two commandments that all the law or the Ten Commandments of the law hung all on all the prophets and the law people. So we also have two commandments. Now, so right here, uh, John is teaching this, for if you love me, keep, keep my commandments, John 14, 15. Now what is he saying, 14, uh, 21? He that hath, there he goes, possessed my commandments and keepeth them is he that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, here as Christ says, and will manifest. I will manifest uh, the word to him. That's what he's talking about. Be made manifest. Okay, so John, first John 5, 3, here's it's, he's, John is talking about the same commandments that Christ taught here. And his commandments are not grievous. Now look what John says. For whatsoever is born or birthed or, or regenerated out of the Spirit overcometh the world. So if you've been born again according to the commandment love, uh, that's how you've been born again. 
you got to believe by faith that you will get the victory over the world. And then John tells you the victory that you, that overcomes the, the cosmos is you believe that you, being born again by the commandments is by faith, people. Faith is, is the victory. Now he now notice uh, John First John one five five here. Who is he that overcometh the cosmos? The one that overcomes the cosmos, but he that believeth that Yeshua is the Son of the Spirit, Son of God. Now, now, people, what I, what you got to whoever's viewing these videos or studying the Scripture. What we all know, whatever you've been raised in, uh, or wherever you attend your assembly, or or so, or a place that's you've been told by believing this or whatever that you've been saved, you got saved. No. Well, remember, people, follow what Christ taught. What the apostles taught is what Christ taught. And that's what we're supposed to believe by faith. Now, uh, if when whenever the preachers are talking about love, it's commandments. People always that's what the word love there. There is some a Greek word phileo. That's fifty three sixty eight, I believe. Uh, but G twenty six G twenty five is have meaning breathe after breathe after his commandments. But what I'm saying there, everybody you that, uh, especially in the South or uh, where all the churches, the denominational, non-denominational, everybody believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But they haven't been taught that's a commandment to believe and then to love one another and that we have to keep those commandments. Most of the time if you talk to any church that saved by grace through faith, if you say anything about a commandment, they throw up a big defense there, you know, and say, no, we're not under the law. That's, that's given to Israel. We're under grace. Well, grace is in Jesus Christ, people. Uh, all knowledge is in Christ. Uh, all the word is in Christ. So if you're a believer in Christ, what did he tell you? I'm not, I'm just, I'm not, I'm trying to show you what he said. If you love him, if you love Christ, you'll keep his commandments. Did, did he throw away the commandments when he died on the tree? No, that's, that's why, what is John teaching here in 1st, 2nd, 3rd John? This is, this is right before John is arrested and put on the island of Patmos for keeping the commandments, which is the testimony of the Messiah, you see? So uh, you've got to discern that spirit, people. See, if you've been born of the spirit, you've got to discern a, there is spirits that are unclean. See, so you being born of the spirit, your spirit has to discern whatever is being taught. Is that spirit of the spirit of God or is it in error? See, is there a falsehood being taught there? So very important. You've got to come to understand that. So there again, uh, I, my question would be to you that you say, well, Larry, I don't know anybody that don't believe that Messiah is the Son of God or Yeshua or Jesus. That's true, but what are they teaching? See, there's another Jesus out there, people. You, I mean, Paul, that's revealed in Scripture. See, but the point I'm saying is, if you believe in the name of the Son of God according to Scripture, uh, you're walking in His commandments and you love the Messiah. That's the word love if you're keeping His commandments. See, that's what He taught us, what the apostles taught. So, very important there. So, uh, you've got to get make sure that's one of the most deceptive words used and, and, uh, and the gospel is, uh, well, Jesus loves you. Well, wait a minute. That word love is not the love they're using in their narrative. That's a phileo love. Right here, uh, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
people. So if you love the Lord, you are walking in his commandments. You have to be taught that according to the word of God. You just don't do it in the flesh. That's why you have to be born of the spirit because it's the spirit that's being led now. It's the spirit where life is. All those that are uh, walking in the spirit have you on in life. All those that uh, uh or walk according to the Spirit, reap on in life, people. So you've got to see that's uh, uh, what the teaching is. So right here, the teaching is if you believe in the Son of God, you're going to overcome the world because you're walking and keeping His commandments. You're now in light, not in darkness. That's where our light and darkness has to do with commandment love. John 1, 5, uh, 1 John 5, 6. This is he that overcame, that came by water and blood, that's the Messiah, not by water only, but also by blood. He was a human, he was uh, the word made flesh, but it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is the truth. There, now there again, it, people, they don't, you gotta get, why did Christ say in the John three, you gotta be born of the water of the spirit and the kingdom? And now here John is saying that Christ come by water uh, and blood like a human, like a man, but he had the spirit of the Father because the spirit is the truth. See, why we got to be born of the truth of the spirit of the word. See, so that's why we bear record to the Messiah, the word made flesh. See, now, it's so important that you see and follow what the teaching is. So if you hear any preacher or anybody teaching, preaching the gospel or teaching the scripture, and they say, uh, well, Jesus loves you, man. You just got to believe on him. Let him in your heart. Well, wait a minute. Please show me where that is in the scripture, people. If you believe in the name of the Son of God and you love the Son, then you're, you're going to keep his commandments, the commandments he's given you to walk in. That's loving the Messiah. That's loving the Father. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to go to John 3.16 in a minute. We'll see what that really says. So, so right here, and then, of course, uh, as I've told you before, for there are three that bear record in the heaven, the Word, the, uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, the Word, the Father, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, these three agree one. Well, there's three that bear witness in the earth. And that's the Spirit. That when Christ received the Holy Spirit, when John, John, uh, John baptized him and the water and the blood that was poured out, they agree in one. That, he poured that water and blood out when he was crucified. And it's through his blood, the uncorruptible blood, that washes our corrupt blood spiritually. We've been washed from our sins in his own blood. So, so that's the three that bear record in the earth, people. Now, we give that testimony of that come from the Father. Now, what does John say? If, I, if we take a hold of the witness of men, but the witness of the Spirit or the Father is greater. For this is the witness of the Father right here. There's the Father's witness of his Son, which he has testified of his Son. What is the witness of? Of his son, people. What is the witness the father testified of his son? And there are the three bear witness in the earth. The son had the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit descended to him when John was baptizing and sealed. And then uh, the water and blood poured out when the soldier pierced his side after he had died. Uh, for the, all those that believe and for the washing of our sins. He was made a blood atonement or sacrifice for those that believe. So the Father's Spirit witnessed his Son in the earth when he created him 
and the word was made flesh. Now, what does John say? If we get a witness from, uh, from men, God's witness is greater. That's why you're born of the Spirit. See, people, we got to be born of the Spirit of God so our spirit will prophesy that witness or testimony of his Son in the earth, which kept the commandments. Now, we're conformed to his image. So we walk in his commandments given to us, which he has testified his son. Now look what John says. He that, 510, the ones that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. Okay, now people, now notice. Here's this word hath right here. 2192, there it is. Uh, Right here in Brown. He that hath the witness in himself, in your spirit. He that believeth. Now remember, if you believeth on the Son of God, you've been born of the Spirit. So you have the witness in yourself, in your spirit. Now what is what does John say? He that believeth not the Spirit of God has made the Spirit of the Father a liar. Why, why, how, is, how is the father made of liar? Because he believes not the witness that God gave of his son. People. See, how unbelievable it is now what in the context, when Christ came to his own and his own received him not, so in this writing, the narrative, it's, 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 it's towards the progenitors of Judah that crucified him but would not hear what he had to say and were not keeping the commandments, which they were given the commandments according uh, to the Torah, but they hated their neighbor. They crucified their brethren from the tribe of Judah. See, so what is John saying? So what did the, now think this. Now what John is saying, and this, now this is not only to the Jews, but in the context back then, that's mainly, and then as the gospel goes to the Gentiles, of course, if there is Gentiles that don't believe, then you've made the creator or the spirit out to be a liar. But first the gospel went to Southern Judah went to the Jews and then to the nations. Now, notice when Christ talking to the progenitors in John 8, he, he taught them all of this and he said, you, you, my word, his word is also the Torah. His is the whole book. But my word has no place in you, he said. Why? Because they didn't love the Father. If they'd have loved the Father, then they would have been walking in commandments towards Christ. But one of the commandments is, thou shalt not kill. And that's all they wanted to do from the very beginning because they hated him. They were jealous of him. And that's why Pilate says, I know what your problem is. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm clean from, from, the, from his blood that you're wanting to shed because he is innocent. Even the uh, the pagan Pilate, uh, uh, that truth come out of his mouth, and but he said, his blood is on your your hands and your children's hands, because I know you're jealous of him. That's why you want him crucified, because the people are following his teaching and leaving uh, the temple, leaving the the Pharisee teaching. See. But the point you've got to see is, of course, now, if a Gentile believes not after being taught the gospel and, and rejects the gospel and doesn't believe, then, hey, this is it, in the context, you, you've made the creator of the universe out to be a liar. Now, when Christ told the Pharisees later on, John 8, 44, then he come back and said, you don't know my father. Because if you knew my father, you'd love me. There again, that love means you'd been walking in the commandments towards me. Not loving him as one of the fellows. 
you got to get this understanding, people. But he said, your father's a devil, for he was a murderer and a liar from the beginning. So, so when we deny what the word and deny, uh, but remember, we Satan's there to bring about the great deception. So, but I'm just telling you, according to the word, if anybody that don't believe, but believing in the Son is He's given you commandments to walk in. If you're walking in those commandments, then you love who you believe in. That's agape love. That's commandment love. If you're not walking in the commandments, then the love of the Father and the love of the Son is not in you because you're not obeying his love for you to walk in the commandments. People. So now, now when Paul reveals that Christ is coming back to take vengeance on those that know not the Spirit of God and know uh, and obey not the gospel of the Master Messiah. Now think about it, that obey. See, the gospel is to believe, be born again, and walk in the commandments, the spiritual kingdom of a king and his kingdom that we've entered. Now, if you're not obeying those commandments given to you by your Savior, your King, uh, then he's going to take vengeance on you. See, obeying the gospel is believing. But see, remember when Paul said that we have been begotten, he has begotten those believers that Paul, the churches he was setting up, the ones that believe, he said, I have begotten you by the gospel. Well, but begotten by the gospel is the same thing John talked. It's when you're born again by the good news, but the good news is now he's given you the two commandments of the renewed covenant to walk in and they will produce the nine fruits of the Spirit, which there is no law. See? So you're not under any law. You're, you're walking according to the commandments, the spiritual commandments, which is, produces the good fruit, see? So now, people, so very, very important. But, but now notice what, uh, as John continues here, and see, now, this is the record of the witness that God gave of his son uh, to us, and that is, uh, has given to us by believing is eternal life, everlasting life. Now, notice, but what, what does John say? And this life is in his son. Now, if we're in Christ, uh, and entered into his kingdom, what did he say? If you love me, keep my commandments. I, if you don't, I'm going to take vengeance because you didn't obey my good news. You didn't obey my gospel, people. This is how serious this is. 512. He that hath the Son hath life. Now there again, notice what here this word is. If you see, if you see echo here, I mean in the Greek, it means you possess it. Uh, let me go ahead and highlight it here so you know what word I'm talking about. Right here, hath, I've done it in blue here. He that hath the Son. Well, if you have the Son, you're obeying His commandments, and you have eternal life. You have eternal life in you, like the Scripture says. But notice, he that possesses not the Son, the son, you, the son of the Spirit, or the Son of God, walked in the commandments. He loved God. He loved his Father with all his heart, mind, soul, and might. And he died, laid his life down for his brethren Israel and for those that believe. That's the two uh, commandments that hang all the law of the prophets. So if you have the Son of God in you, you have commandment love in you, people. That's the whole teaching of this. And they don't, none of them, they, they don't teach that. You have to discern what spirit is, where it's coming from, people. We're down at the end. We're coming to the end. And I've said, uh, the end is, there is going to be a false Messiah stand up and a false prophet. 
that's given power over Satan to save the whole and half of the world, unless the light of the true gospel, the commandments of the gospel that's given to us by the love of God through his love of his son to us that believe, unless that's in you, uh, you're, you are in error, people. You've been taught in error. You're following, uh, going in at the broad way that leads to destruction, people. I'm giving you the verses. I'm showing you what they mean. So uh, there again, I'm going to say, anybody listening to this video, if you hear any preacher out there talk about God's, the power of God's love for you, the dynamous power of the love of God for you is by the Spirit, that dynamous power will write them commandments on your heart and it will be established in your understanding and you will bear record by your walk, your witness to the world. Now that's the power of God's love for us that believe. But they don't ever tell you that. They, they give you the power of God, how much he loves you. If you'll just accept him, if you'll just let, well, if you, listen, Pete, if you said the sinner's prayer or you've accepted Christ as your personal savior, all those cliches come from these false teachers. But let's just say that's, you believe that. Well, then you better check your scripture. If you've accepted Christ as your personal savior, you better be doing what he said for you to do and what his love is for you. Now that part they didn't tell you, you see, because you've got to be walking his commandments and that's coming out of darkness and entering into his marvelous light. That's what you're being created to walk in those good works that the spirit fitted up in advance. That's back in the garden when he gave the commandments uh, to Adam and Eve and they broke it right off the bat and they were kicked out of the garden. So uh, people, as Solomon says, it's a duty. The matter of all, for all men and women is to keep his commandments, see? So, but, but see, Satan has completely deceived the so-called Sunday church because uh, they're saved by grace through faith and we're not going back under the law, that's of works. You're being created in Christ. Did Christ walk in the two commandments that no, no other person ever kept and he kept them perfect? Because he said, I didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets, but to fulfill. But he tells you the two commandments he fulfilled hangs all the law of the prophets. Now he's renewed the covenant with his people, which they rejected because they did not believe the first commandment. They did not believe in, in him as the only begotten son of God. Then that gospel goes to us. But all those that say they believe got to be walking according to what his word says, people. That's what I'm trying to show you here, the difference. Uh, so if you have the son, you have life, and you're walking according to his commandments in his kingdom. Okay, now, notice here. And then John comes back. Look how awesome this is in 5.13. These things I have written unto you that believe. Now, these things uh, John has written to who? Only the believer, people. These things I've written to you that believe. They're not written to anybody else, but if you say that you are a believer in the Messiah, you better go back and uh, reaffirm the scripture and repent of of the deception that we've all grown up in and believe what the word says. So right here, these things I have written unto you that believe, not on the fence, or this is not, this is to the believer that believe on the name of the Son of the Spirit that you may know that you have possess eternal life and we believe that by faith and that you may believe on the name uh, and that 
ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, and this is the confidence that we possess in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Notice, it's according to his will. Not anything that we want or ask, it's according to his will. Okay, notice, 515. And if we know that uh, he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we will possess the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life. For them that sin not unto death, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that we should pray for it. There is a sin. The sin unto the death is God, make the Father out to be a liar and don't believe in the Son of God. That's what he told them. If you believe not who I am, you're going to die in your sins. There is sin that is not unto death, people, things that we do. Uh, but there again, if, if we're taught and it's corrected by the Scripture, uh, then uh, to give an instance, when we when I when we talk about people that now that are following the food laws, that was given uh, to Israel uh, the unclean and and the clean meats that they were to eat the clean. But in the renewed covenant under the Torah, yes, to Israel. But in the renewed covenant, so it's but the grace here is not. Uh, the, that those that eat the unclean meats, uh, for us to make that a stumbling block and say, hey, uh, since you're a believer Messiah now, you better be following uh, the dietary laws because if you're not, that's an abomination to the Spirit. It's true to the, the context is true, but the, but the teaching of the renewed covenant is if, if you feel that you're pleasing God more by eating clean meats versus the believer that's, that's not eating clean meats, then in your heart you feel that you are better, in other words. And that's really true because uh, I know, I mean, that's when we see these certain things, it's happened with me. And I, uh, when I learned about the dietary laws, I never taught it as part of salvation. But I felt that that the clean meats were definitely what God had given his people, but I never did use it as a stumbling block towards, even though in, at times I would remember even of my own family, uh, well, what are you eating shrimp? Well, I like it. Well, okay, but you know, but I didn't completely condemn, but I had a feeling about well, why are you doing that when, when he said not to do that. But in the renewed covenant, it's revealed that God has allowed that because it's not about what goes in your mouth uh, that goes through your digestive system and comes out. It's what comes out of your mouth, people. So there, I put a teaching up on that. So... We have to really be careful on that. Not that you, if you're, if you're eating, going by the dietary laws, and that's wonderful. But you got a young believer that comes in. The commandments is what has to be taught. Walking in those commandments, uh, and that is when you don't like anything. There's no other gift coming. Okay, so here, uh, very important. See, so uh, and of course, right here, all unrighteousness is sin. Uh, and there is a sin not a, I think John was talking about. We know that whosoever born of God sinneth not. Uh, but that he is begotten of the Spirit, keepeth himself, and the wicked one touches him not. And we know that we are of the Spirit, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Why, why would John, uh, John say, if we are of the Spirit of God, because we keep in his commandments, and the whole world lieth in wickedness, or evil there is because they're not walking according to his commandments, see. And we know that the Son of God has come and that has given us understanding, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, the Messiah. This is the true spirit 
and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols or idolatry. So very important here uh, that we see this. Now let's let's look here real quick in uh, uh, John fifteen ten. Look what Christ says. If we keep, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. There it is, people, right here in yellow, my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Okay, now, G26 here, people. That's G26, G25. It means to breathe after the commandments. So, now, now what, what is Christ saying? If you protect and guard my commandments, you will, shall abide in my love for you. See, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and I abide in His love for me. These things I have spoken to you that, that my joy might remain in you and your joy will become full. And that's play role there. That's, that is a play role. Now, when he uses this word right here, people, remember the, how important these words are. He uses plero here because Christ used the same word in Matthew 5, 17 when he says, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets, but to fulfill. Get, get, I hope you get a hold of this. Because, see, that's what he did. He fulfilled the two greatest commandments that no other person has ever fulfilled, starting with Adam. And that, he, he come to do that, uh, the will of the Father, and he fulfilled that. He leveled up and fulfilled that. And what is he saying to us here? That if we keep his commandments, then, uh, He's saying that your joy be full. And of course, joy there comes, our joy is in the Holy Spirit. Because see, that's why it's the Spirit, the prophecy, people. That's why you have to be born of the uh, Spirit. You, you can't, if you're born of God's Spirit, that's God's love for you. God's Spirit's love for you is to walk in the commandments. Now, those that do that love the Creator, love the Son, and, and the Spirit and the Son, it loves you in the same way. See, that's the whole teaching, people. That's why the deceptive, they've taken this word charity or love and completely convoluted the Scripture with it. Okay, so very important. So uh, if you see what Christ is teaching here, then he said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now there again, how did Christ... This is very important. How did Christ love his chosen apostles? How did he love his brethren? But especially his chosen apostles. He walked in the commandments. He loved God, the Father, with all his heart, mind, and soul, and his brethren, and, and his neighbor. That's how he loved them, people. You see, now there's no doubt that, that Christ didn't have an affectionate, a phileo love for him. There's no doubt his friends, his personalities and things. But but when it comes to true personality and phileo love, when Christ told him what was going to happen, and Peter stepped up and said, far be it from me, Lord, uh, there ain't nobody going to mess with you as long as I'm with you. And Christ looked at Peter, and didn't, he didn't look at Peter and say, how much I love you, Peter. Phileo, he looked at Peter and said, Satan, get behind me. For Satan saves things that be of men, not of God, not of the, of the Spirit. So that's why he's a liar and a murderer. It's not of God. So, and, 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 and Peter stepped out with his flesh and said, hey, I'll fight for you right down to the death. And Christ said, hey, you'll deny me three times before the, uh, the cock grows thrice. Uh, you'll deny me three times. And, 
And each denial, when you study that, got more further away from ever knowing him. And the last time he denied Christ before the one, he said, I don't even know who you're talking about. I ain't ever been around. I don't even know such a person. Think about that. You see? So was he walking in the, the Lord's commandments? And that's why he said, I got to go away to send you the comforter, to send you the Holy Spirit. So uh, you'll be born of the Spirit. And the Spirit will bear a record to the truth in you. People. All right, so here, so greater love is no man that he may lay down his life uh, for his friends. That's his, that's his commandment there. So very important. Now, before we close here, as I said, I want to go. I want to go to John three sixteen, and let's look here, John three uh, and sixteen. Everybody's familiar with this verse. Of course, this is the scripture you tell telling Nicodemus you've got to be born of the Spirit, water and Spirit, you can't enter the kingdom. Okay, here we are at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that the ones believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, all right, now... Of course, so in the yellow here, in what fashion? That's like the Lord's Prayer. Pray after this manner. So this is how, right here, the reason, the Spirit of the Father, or the Spirit of Elohim, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Now, how did he so breathe on his cosmos that he gave his only begotten Son? Okay, now... So when Christ taught, what did Christ say? The Father has given me my commandments, and I love my Father because I keep his commandments. See, We just went through that. That's why I'm coming. He, he hadn't told everything here. He keeps teaching as we go further along. So, so it's very important that you come to understand that. This is, why, this is how he loved the cosmos. Uh, when, it, when the... When the People say God loves everybody. God's love for you and for me, when we hear the gospel and believe, that spirit then reveals to our baby spirit that we've been born of, we have to walk in these commandments. That's God's love for his cosmos. Now, why did he send his only begotten son? Because his son fulfilled his love for his son, and, and his son fulfilled the two commandments that he had given all the way from starting when he created Adam, people. So his son was the only one, when it says he never uh, knew sin or never sinned, he kept the two great commandments. And that's why the Pharisees would say, what's the greatest commandment? Uh, what's the second commandment? And Christ said, well, if you do these, then you have life. Because nobody else had ever done that. See? So uh, that's how he loved the cosmos. He sent his son to fulfill, level up the two commandments that, that he gave from the beginning that's never been kept by not even Israel. And, of course, when Christ gets here, of course, when he says, hey, your father's the devil, the uh, love of my father, the spirit is not in you, if you had the Spirit of God, you would love me. What does what does that mean? That they would love him as, oh, you're just, I really love. No, it, the, the narrative is you would be keeping the commandments and you'd walk in, be walking in the commandments towards your brethren. That you wouldn't have any ill towards me. Remember, uh, complete love, complete agape love, commandment love, there's no ill to the brethren. Or to the families, if we're if we're obeying the love of the Father for us to keep His commandments, that's loving each person. Because if each person is doing that, there's no covetousness, there's no hatred, there's no wanting to kill, there's no idolatry, there's no uh, adultery, there's no fornication. People, we're not taught this. What, what we're taught now, hey, that's that's the law. You're under the law. This is the law of the Spirit, people. It's always been. Uh, but it's so very important that you understand. So God's love for his cosmos was 
His only begotten son would be raised and would keep his commandments and then uh, die and then uh, pour out his blood for the remission of our sins. And notice, now if we believe in him, we will not perish but have everlasting life. Possess it. Well, that's exactly what John taught that we just left in 1 John 5. But what do we know? Believing in the Son now is the first commandment to be born again. And the second commandment is to love one another. Now you're walking in the kingdom, been translated from out of darkness into the kingdom, or the Son's kingdom, and you're walking in the commandments of a king in his kingdom. Now notice, he said, For, for the Spirit sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the cosmos through him be saved. Now, what, see, what does that actually mean to you now? Why is the world, why is the world already condemned people? As we close here. Because the world is in darkness. Why? Because it's not been taught and, or, and is believing the gospel and walking and uh, obeying the commandments uh, and the spirit in you. Uh, that's the power of God that you keep his commandments. That's his love for you. That's your love for him. See, that's not being taught. If it was, look, look at the state of the world, which the Bible said would happen. As closer we get to the end, iniquity will abound. The commandments for each other is completely, uh, it's, uh, it's all iniquity now. That's what Christ said. Love commandments would wax colder and colder, and iniquity would abound. And that's why he said, if, uh, if he says there's be wars and rumors of wars, that's fighting against each other. Well, is that keeping his commandment? Okay. There'll be ethnogs, ethnogs or nations against nations. Wait a minute, is, is that walking in the commandments? Uh, it said there would be uh, kingdoms against kingdoms, you see. There'll be earthquakes and pestilence and, and tsunamis and hurricanes and tornadoes. That's because the, even the the weather, they call it climate change, but why is all of that out of order? As Paul reveals that the whole creation is moaning and groaning. The things are out of order. Why, people? Because of S-I-N. It's because we've all, we're sinning against God. We cause the creation to turn by sin. Why did Christ, why did uh, the Spirit, or why did the Father remove Israel from the land? Because they wouldn't obey. Uh, they become greedy. They become uh, prideful. Instead of doing what he says according to his, his law, why did he have to take them? He said, I got to remove you out of my land uh, because you caused the land to sin against me. See, God's order is, is everything is ordered and uh, obeying uh, his laws, uh, even the natural laws. And yet now look what man is doing to bring on uh, this in the end here is because uh, uh, they don't, they're not saying to walk in the commandments one to another and you'll be blessed and the nation will be blessed and the God will prosper. What do you think you're going to be in the millennium? When Christ sets up his kingdom, why are things going to prosper, people? Because the beast, the false prophet, and uh, the God-haters are going to be bound in the pit, in the lake of fire. They're going to be uh, cast out. And then uh, the Bible says the oceans will multiply. The fishes will multiply. The water will be cleaned. The land will refurbish. Why? Because uh, his creation is walking and humanity is obeying what he said because his son now is ruling and reigning. But, but guess what? For 6,000 years, look at God's grace and mercy he's given to mankind about keeping his commandments and they're not grievous. And when you do that, uh, there is no ill towards your neighbor. 
Isn't that amazing? And what does it say, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7? That he didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. Uh, see, the spirit of fear, you, that's why you got to be born of his spirit, walking in his commandments, and there's no spirit of fear because love, walking in the commandments, cast out fear. When we're walking in his being obedient to his commandments, that is perfect agape love, people. That's what that means. Anytime you see that, as I close Romans 5, 5, for we, he has not given us to be ashamed of the promise. The promise there means the helmet of salvation was the hope of Christ's coming. His coming to set up his kingdom, literal kingdom. So we're not ashamed of that hope, Paul says. Why? Because the love of the Spirit of the Father of Adonai or Elohim is poured out in our hearts, poured out, gushing out in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which was given to us once we believed. Is that an unbelievable? But how many people, when they read that, when you, when you go to Romans 5, 5 and read that, do you fully understand what Paul is revealing to your spirit? That if you've been born again and the hope of, of, of the Messiah is coming, no matter how much the world hates you, uh, that we're not ashamed of him coming to set up his kingdom and to judge the world and for the, the God-haters, the ungodly is what he said. I reserve the day to judge him. Uh, so now, so Paul is revealing, if you've been born, see, we can't. It's, we're led by the Spirit, people. Remember Christ said, those that are born of the flesh are the flesh. Those that are born of the Spirit are spirit. So we are led. The more you connect with God's words, which are spirit, that word, that spirit is in you. That's the dunamis power of God, his spirit working in you. That's his energy. That's his operation. He's working in you while we're yet uh, in this, still in this Adam flesh that's dying every day. So this is unbelievable when you understand. The love of God is poured out. That means his love for you, he's pouring out those spiritual commandments in your heart, in your understanding. But how does he pour them out into your heart and understanding? I got to go away so I can send you the comforter and he will guide you into all truth. So it's the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that's pouring out the spiritual commandments. And it's not our flesh that's doing that, people. Our flesh, the, the commandments of God uh, to the carnal mind, God's uh, nomos, and that means his law for his sheep, is completely foolishness. It's enmity. The carnal mind cannot receive the things of the Spirit because it's complete foolishness uh, to the carnal uh, soul, the carnal mind. So hopefully you're coming to see this, and I, I just feel it's so paramount because we have to renew this. So I, I pray that, that those that are coming to understand this and are uh, walking in the commandments that are given to us according to the word. That's your testimony, Messiah, and th that you know that you have eternal life. And we're approaching the time period, people, when this earth is going to have this false Messiah stand up with this false prophet and these false miracles and things are coming, and it's for God is bringing this on because uh, they did not, the world has not received the love of the gospel of the truth. So he, he's going to send the really strong delusion here, people. And if you see what's going on with this virus, which I don't want to get into at this time, but there's other things coming. This is not the thing that they think that once they get the vaccine and, and uh, then everything's... Uh, Everybody can go back to work and everybody can do their own thing, uh, but you got to have the vaccine. That's uh, all this is, people, is uh, part of the strong delusion. 
But guess what? It's also, God's got two operations. Uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is nigh at hand. Same message that it was 2,000 years ago is the same one all the way to the end. But we also know the other operation is a deception because the people that don't love his truth. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may that spirit witness your spirit as we trade these scriptures one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the coming King. Amen.